As designers, AI is changing our world. And if you're still doing everything manually, you're already falling behind. Hiring managers and recruiters are already asking candidates how they use AI in their design process. In this video, we're going to introduce you to the concept of building with AI, where we build a simple color palette generator so that you have the skills to build any application. It's great for beginners, but if you want the full lesson, I'll put a link for our course below. Let's go. Ah, uh, that tastes like a faster workflow. Okay, let's go from zero to building any app in about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, it might be more, it might be less. Don't hold me to it. Okay, so here we are with Unlovable. If you're not familiar with Lovable, it's a tool that really allows you using AI to build any app idea, sync it with authentication, and deploy it in like an hour or two hours. Um, now, um, some of the topics I'm going to cover today, I'm just covering them at a high level. I do go more in depth in our course. I'll put a link for that in the description. But again, here I am with Unlovable. Now, one mistake I see a lot of designers make is they try to put everything inside the first prompt, everything they want to accomplish, everything the app's going to build, or everything that the app uh, is going to have feature wise. Now, the issue with that is AI isn't at a point yet where it can handle all these different features and sort of put everything together. So you tend to get a lot of errors. So to start off, just say, build me a hello world uh, application. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to um, add on to our knowledge base additional context for the AI without almost like tainting what this project will be right away and having it build something from the get-go. Because again, AI, we kind of need to guide it. Okay, It's not at a point yet where we can enter in a prompt and we get a perfect application. So what it's doing now is just sort of writing the, the code for a simple Hello World application. If you have any development experience, I'm sure you know what a Hello World is so i can see that that's been added uh and on the right hand side here oh kind of in the ui collective color scheme which is kind of an accident um which says hello world um perfect so we have a real simple application now let's look at adding items to our knowledge base and actually building out our first app idea okay so I know I mentioned it briefly, but a big mistake that I see designers making is just sort of packing every requirement into like one chat. Okay. The chat is there for a reason for you to dialogue with it. Now, when it comes to lovable, you can only have one chat, a lot of AI tools as well, like especially depending on the complexity of the product that you're building. Okay. Your chat can get super long. And AI isn't great at always remembering what was like one of the first things you added in that chat if it's like two weeks later. Okay. Even with chat GPT, I'm sure we've all used it by now. We've probably experienced that where it doesn't remember something that we told it like three weeks earlier. AI design is the exact same thing. Okay. So when every single one of your projects, you have this something that's called a knowledge base again within lovable and different tools called different things. But essentially what it is, is a set of guidelines that the AI is always going to reference. So if it's not understanding something that you're saying, you can say reference the knowledge base. It's going to go back, read the knowledge base and refresh its memory on what it is. Okay. And this is also a living document. You can update it as you go. Okay. So now that we have an under basic understanding of the knowledge base, let's go into chat GPT and just say, build me a simple set of requirements for this app. And the app that we're going to build something simple, no integrations, no authentication. Again, some of those things I covered in my course, I'll put a link for that below, um, where it's really just a mini color palette, mini color palette generator. So user clicks a button, gets a random five new color palette from a preset list, okay? So what ChatGBT is doing right now is just building up the requirements that we can feed to the knowledge base, okay? There is a little bit more that you can do to this, um, but we're not going to go through that right now. Again, this video is all about getting our feet wet, introducing everyone to AI tools, what we're going to start to cover a lot more and helping designers operate more efficiently using AI, whether it's different AI design tools, different agents, so on and so forth, okay? So let's just go ahead, uh, copy this. And then let's go into lovable and let's uh, go into our knowledge base and simply paste it in and let's get rid of some of these nice to haves for now. And again, specifying no user authentication or no backend database required. Uh, Cause again, we're not going to get into that video. This video is all about getting our feet wet. Okay. So let's save that, uh, close this and let's keep moving forward. One thing AI tools are really good at is just skipping ahead, okay? And if you upload too much at once, things are going to start to fail. AI is going to get confused, regardless if you have a knowledge base, okay? So one thing, whenever you're working with a AI design tool, is have it break it out into certain steps that need to be followed so it doesn't build everything at once. So because this is a really simple application, I'm just going to say, uh, help me build this application in three steps. Tell me what these steps are, but don't build any UIs yet, okay? So uh, break uh, out uh, the steps to build this application in three steps that we will follow in order, follow in order, but do not begin building 
any UIs just yet, okay? Otherwise, what it's going to do is going to take that and actually almost look at it like a queue to get started. <laughs> and it's just going to start building your UIs. Again, working with AI design tools, they're not at a point yet where they can just build everything from the get-go. Uh, have it make sure it follows very concrete steps. Okay, so I see three steps here. Create the color data structure and core components, implement the palette generator logic style and polish the UI. Okay, perfect. Now that we have our three steps, let's go one by one. Okay, let's say uh, start with step one. Start with step one. Start with step one. And again, you can be a little bit more descriptive with the prompts as well, depending on the complexity of your applications. Sometimes that you might break it out into individual subtasks. Like first, authenticate, uh, include authentication, then test forgot password. And those are things that should come uh, not together, but work one by one, again, just depending on the complexity. So, but again, because this is a simple color palette generator, we're just gonna say start with step one, should be relatively straightforward. Uh, step one, create the color data structure and core components. Perfect, so I can see it's writing um, the necessary code. Perfect, so we have a collection of 10 predefined color palettes. Perfect, so click the button below to generate uh, a new color palette. There's no button there, so sort of just a mini color palette generator. Okay, so let's move forward to step two. Now let's before, proceed forward with uh, step two. And for this, I just copied it all together. Again, just to give it maximum description as to what needs to be done. Sorry, me saying uh, proceed with step one was not exactly best practice, <laughs> but I am a rule breaker. Do, 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 do. So with this one, it's all about um, uh, random palette uh, generation. I can build the generate new palette button component. Perfect. So now we have that button to generate uh, a new palette. And I can see that that works just fine. But again, if we were just to show this inside of a portfolio, you know, it, it's missing like that factor. So next, let's look at improving the UI really quick. So lastly, let's proceed with step three. And again, we're not going to integrate with any authentication provider. Uh, we're not going to deploy this on our application right now. Some of those topics I do cover on our course that goes a little bit more in depth on all this. Again, this core, this video is simply just to get our feet wet and introduce you to the concept of doing this for those who have yet to do so before. Because again, it is a relatively new topic. So now we're introducing step three, style and polish the UI. Do, 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 do. Perfect. So uh, it's improved the UI with a couple enhancements. So the color box component, the palette display, the main page, we also added some animations as well. Um, okay, so uh, it looks like the generate new palette button is flashing for whatever reason. So let's hit that. And I can see that uh, those colors change every time. But again, as you, it's really important that as you're building out things with AI, test your apps as you go. Don't assume it got it right. Okay. The fact that this generate new palette button is kind of flashing. One, that would not meet accessibility standards, and two, which is kind of annoying. So let's ask it to fix it. Uh, the generate new palette button uh, is flashing, flashing. Please keep it static. Please keep it static. And uh, what it's going to do, hopefully fix that flashing. Again, as you're building out complex applications, there's a lot that you can do with Lovable. There's a lot that you can do with tools like Cursor. It's important to test your applications as you go. Don't just assume that the AI got it right. Huge mistake I see designers doing all the time. I was chatting with one designer a little bit earlier on who's having some issues with the AI app that they're building. And I realized that I was chatting with them is he just like keep assume that what was being done was being what, what he wanted was being built in the AI. So always test your application, call out specific things that need to be fixed as you go, and it avoids a lot of fact, a lot of refactoring a little bit later on. So now I can see that the animate pulse slow uh, class from the button, uh, this has been removed, and I can now I can see that we still have our hover effect. Uh, I can click and generate a new color palette. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Your support goes a really long way. We have a ton of more great content coming out on AI, okay? We also have a ton of updates coming to our design system coming up. We're actually going to be building some UIs together. I do apologize for the delay. I have been sick a little bit. Um, so lots more videos on the way. Be sure to subscribe uh, for more content on AI, more content on design systems, and more content to help you be the best designer possible. Thanks so much. See you at the next one.